And let's talk C.J. Gardner Johnson. Yo, this story is wild. I sent this to you and Danny because I was, I was. Well, let's give a little recap yeah. on his journey real quick. Started in 2019, pre-COVID. Uh, was a Saint for a few years. Then he went to. He was a Saint for three years. Then Detroit, Detroit. So I'm sure Perfet yeah. covered him there. And then. Oh no no no! He was with yeah, the Saints. Philly, then, then Philly, then Philly. Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say because then he came back to Philadelphia. Right. Now. Philly in 2022, Detroit 2023. So, what he put on social media when he left Philadelphia and what he put out there, we talked about not burning bridges at work or relationships. You don't tell some buddy of yours. You know, I never liked that girl anyway. She was uh, she was sort of busted. You could do better. Then you find out. Oh, they're back together. I have friends that have lost friendships over that because they get back with that girl and they're sort of embarrassed of the friendship. And they're like, yeah, I don't, like you sort of drift away from that person. Like if you tell, if you tell one of your buddies, yo, you broke up with her. Good. I hated her. I have a friend that was working at a hamburger place and he was like, F you, F you, you're cool. F you. He burned all the bridges as he left. Are you sure that just wasn't half baked? No, no, no. That was you, that was you. Okay. Yeah, he's Cuban, B. Yeah. You, yeah. You, <laughs> you, you're cool. And you, I'm out. Oh, you have audio of that, Perfect? No, that's amazing. That's, that's sitting insane. around the board. Yeah. You never used. You know what? And he burned, he burned like four bridges right there. So when you leave somewhere, listen, if you want to know the truth, I've worked at places where I look back and say, yeah, that guy stunk. That woman stunk. I'm, I did not enjoy working with them. But I don't blatantly talk about it or advertise it because I'm what you call, like you and you and everyone else hopefully listening, you're an adult. You're a professional. You don't make dumb choices. I. You could leave a job. I've seen people get let go from our old job, Sirius XM and ESPN and other places, and they immediately saw bad mouth. And I'm thinking to myself, bad move. On social you, media. What are you doing? Yeah, you just start seeing these uh, these rants it's terrible it's Listen, a bad look you I, let your emotions get the get the best of you i left iheart in the early 2000s i never thought i'd work with some of the people i worked with again fast forward fox sports radio part of the iheart family so some of my old bosses from 20 years ago that i thought i could have said f him f her i was always kind because who knows? And guess what? We work with some of those people again. Yeah. So you never know. I bring it up because- Lucky I call that guy. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who's always been a pretty fun, outspoken guy, he said, my least favorite thing about Philly is the people. They're effort obnoxious. Can't stand those efforts. And guess Which where again, he is now? May have been his truth. We get all that. Wasn't his type of fan, his type of person. <laughs> Where is he Feelings now? Feelings were hurt, and now he's back. Where is he now, Cove? Back with the Eagles. And I think he should take the Larry David approach. What if does you don't, that mean? If you don't know the Larry David approach, let me explain. On an episode of Curb, actually, not an episode of Curb. Let me, let me take it back further. Larry David... Pretty, pretty good. Larry David, as you know, co-wrote Seinfeld with Jerry Seinfeld, except the last two seasons. This inspired an episode of Seinfeld with George Costanza, who is based off of Larry David. Back in the day when Larry David wrote for Saturday Night Live, he tells a great story where he was writing what he thought were all these amazing bits and skits. Dress rehearsal, right before the show, they'd always say, we're cutting that one. We're cutting that one. And they kept cutting Larry David's skits. Okay. He blew up on set. F you. You stink. You're the worst. F this. I'm out of here. I quit. I'm gone. Larry David leaves. Goes home. And this is, you know, pre-Seinfeld Larry David. So he's like, oh, no. What am I going to do about money? I just, why would I do that? And his buddy, Kramer, who the character Kramer from Seinfeld is based on. The real was, Kramer. The real Kramer who is his neighbor, said, hey, just go back to work on Monday and pretend it never happened. Larry David goes back to work on Monday. Is this the origin? Okay, hold on. And, and uh, he goes back to work on Monday, and it, it pretends the blow-up on SNL never happened. Pretends like he never quit and yeah, just, blew up and, at everybody. And everyone just sort of accepted him, which inspired the Seinfeld episode where George quit, and Kramer said, 
Hey, just go pretend like pretend it never happened. You think I, I was CJ more Gardner Larry Johnson David should do the same of, thing? I was more thinking that Larry David line of F you and I'll see you on Monday or F you and I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, Larry David, it's a great thought, right? Like if you just pretend it didn't happen, does that work sometimes? No. It works on a show and it's funny because Kramer said it. And yeah, that wouldn't work with Scott and hell Don. No. That wouldn't work with anybody. That wouldn't work. You try to do that with your wife or girlfriend, right? You you have a blowout fight or you guys disagree on something. You try to pretend like, yeah, it didn't happen, and they're still holding that grudge. Not all the time, but a lot of the time because that's sort of in our nature, guys, to just move past yeah. it, move on, and sort of forget about it. But I don't think that, that flies in real life. So if you think you should do that, Again, it's funny, Rich. I'm not, you know, but literally, but I think he needs to address that. There's enough. I think he needs to do some some good PR to win back the fans who are like, yeah, because even me as a Yankees fan, even though Stroman never played for the Yankees, he badmouthed the Yankees, he badmouthed the fans, and to me, I'm like, well, he better overly embrace them as a result. To, I think it's to get him on your I, side. I think it's correctable, but the question is, is it better to? Ignore I don't think it's ever it? better to ignore the problem, address the problem, accountability. Well, his first tweet was flying home. With it's an e- easier to ignore the problem. I love to do that. Flying home. Yeah. Eagle emoji. And because of the response of people saying like, whoa, 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 hold up. You think we forgot that you said we're, quote, obnoxious, the worst effing fans. I can't stand those effers. So he followed up like an hour later. I guess within an hour, everyone's like, whoa, 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 hold up. You got some explaining to do. I like his approach because he tried to downplay it, and sometimes downplaying it, I, I'm not saying ignore it, though I do love the Larry David Dude, approach. We've learned this lesson in sports. You take these things head on, and then they go away. It's the Andy Pettit theory. Yes, I took steroids, but I did it for X, Y, and Z reasons. I'm sorry I take accountability. That guy's forgiven. You take the Rafael Palmero approach of, no, I didn't, and uh, you know I'm defensive about it. People don't forget, and they like you less. I think C.J. Gardner-Johnson needs to take it head on, take accountability, Dude. say that he was emotional and wrong for it, and he couldn't be happier about this opportunity it, to win over the fans again and play for Philadelphia. If you ignore it, I do think a lot of people assume guilt and the worst. I think if you do confront it, I agree with you there. In fact, a lot of times when a celebrity gets caught cheating, what do they do? I, you could say fake it or not, but they they do the whole, I have a sex addiction. <laughs> yeah. I can't control it. I'm, see- I'm seeking help. If someone says I'm seeking help. Is, is he saying he has anger issues or something? Seeking help is what people will say in the celebrity sports world. Yeah. To, like, that's a fr- I, I, I hate to use mental health as a, as a freebie, but if someone does cheat on their wife, Danny G, in the Hollywood world, in the public eye, an athlete gets caught with someone, what do they always say? I'm, I'm seeing someone about it. I'm in therapy. I'm working on it. If someone thinks that you're trying to better the situation... They have sympathy. C.J. Gardner Johnson must immediately have realized, I got to address this. I'm coming home. Eagle emoji. I'm flying home. Wasn't going to cut it. So he did right within the last half a day. He wrote last night. I do owe the fans of Philly an apology. Regardless, this is an amazing place. We had some memories together, huh? Let's go get us one. Yeah, I mean damage like, control. Like damage. Like hmm. I think he, I, I don't I think know he has if that was en- uh, Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if that's enough. It's not it, enough. Is that like I, I like how he like sort of downplayed it. Like yeah, I was I was speaking out of emotion. L- love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he owes a little more sincerity, and he'll get that chance at some press conferences. I'm sure. I don't know, people Byer. are gonna ask him about it. Dan Byer, is that enough? He is, doesn't need to is, kiss their ass. Is but a is a hey, I apology. Regardless, we had some amazing times. No, Let's okay. go win one, everybody. <laughs> Rich, before before we get to Dan Byer, I think it goes back to what. People say when they get caught cheating, I think he has to explain like his emotional state at that time. Not that he had issues going on or anger issues or mental problems or whatever, but that he was extremely emotional at the time and he apologizes. Make it so that's understandable and coming from a real place. Yeah, Philly fans are really understandable and forgiving. That'll, <laughs> that'll work right. out well. Hey, what's he going to do? That'll, that'll just, you know, what if he, hey, water under the bridge. What if he appealed to the, the vibe of Philly, which... You know, listen, I'm a New Yorker growing up. I live in L.A. now, but as a New Yorker, I know that Philly vibe. It's it's that Boston, New York, Philly trifecta of arrogant Northeast sports fan. Philadelphia fans pride themselves on being like tough, hard-nosed, hard-working type of people. What if he was like, 
Hey, listen, man to man, everybody. I was talking out of emotion, and I'll get, I'm going to give you that passion back in a positive way. Like, what if he tried to angle it? Like, like stop being soft. You're Philadelphia. I just say say less because they, they just keep. They don't. If he if Did he really becomes <laughs> if he becomes an All Pro, they're going to love him, mm-hmm. right? If he if he gets burned, if he's missing tackles, they're going to hate him. Yeah. So who cares about an apology? Like yeah. it's football. Yeah, you know what? It it really is. I do love when these things happen in the world of sports. That ha- it's happened somewhere else too. Uh, who just signed with the Steelers? Correct me for not having it in front of me. Someone just signed with the Steelers who had previously said Tomlin was soft. I let me. Let me was it Patrick Queen? Was it might might have been if Russell if, if, Wilson? <laughs> it was Russ. Could someone just Google that while while we take? Uh, Sorry, Patrick Queen, if it wasn't you, but that was their biggest signing. There was a, I saw something that said someone that just signed with the Steelers. If you if you check the receipts, at one point they insinuated like Tomlin was soft and, and didn't like him. And I'm like, ooh, now you're there. That's why you. Didn't never... Austin Reeves talk smack about LeBron James when he was a kid? Yes, that's a great yeah, yeah. story too. You know, and he just addressed it. He's like, "Yeah, hey, I was 13 years old. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Le- something dumb." Yeah, LeBron laughed it off. Yeah, it's funny. That was funny. That's so a, that's a really and and to hear LeBron, by the way, and Austin Reeves tell that story is really funny because Austin Reeves said he was nervous about about it. LeBron's feelings, and LeBron's like. You were a kid, you were and he yeah. laughed it off. So, again, we ask you, Fox Sports Radio Nation, do you take these things head on? Dan Byer's absolutely right. All's forgiven if he plays on the field, if he shows up and he delivers. That's, Strom- that's Strom- a guarantee. Stroman to the Yankees is a good one because not only did he leave the Mets with a with a bad taste because he talked about that he insinuated the Mets were a racist organization in New York. He didn't really vibe with New York. He did talk negatively about the pinstripes. Yeah. And now he's a Yankee. Well, how does that work out? I think again, you have to go a little overboard, go the extra mile to win over the fans. Like, you might need him a little more now because Garrett, Garrett Cole might be hurt. I'm I'm seeing reports, so he, I mean, yeah, apparently he's out a few months. So, jeez, well, I think the Empire will have the update there. But you know how um, he didn't do anything wrong by any means, but he did everything right. Bryce Harper, the way he embraced the Philly fans, that's what a Strowman needs to do. You need to go a little above and beyond. Same thing here with C.J. Gardner-Johnson. I, I think so. You want the fans on your side. You want to get on the field and feel comfortable, feel confident, and feel like you're playing for them. You need them. You need their support. They're what makes the team. They support you. So I say do your best to win them back, win them over. 